Welcome to the Complete Story Series, where I take trade paperbacks and single issues and I break them down into digestible bites to help you understand. Then I read them dramatically back to you, allowing you to get a better understanding of the storylines that you enjoy about your favorite superheroes. Today we're going to be doing the finale to Detective Comics. To give you a quick recap as to how we've gotten to this point, Batman decided that he needed to have more boots on the ground in Gotham, someone that wasn't Batman. And he made a team which involved Batwoman, Cassandra Cain, Tim Drake, Clay face and spoiler. He also brought in Batwing and a few others eventually, but that was the core of the team. They then went through many adventures in which they decided that maybe Batman's methods weren't the best, but they were better than the paramilitary group known as the Batmen that the US government decided to sanction and bring into Gotham. After defeating the Batmen, all of the people who organized that then disbanded and Tim Drake was killed, but he was then brought back to life and now we have to deal with the death of Clayface, Batwoman being pushed out of the group and her deciding to revive the Batmen. In our last video, we watched as the Bat family sat down and discussed what they should do regarding Kate Kane and the murder of Clayface. While many points were made by each member of the team, it was Barbara who told Bruce that ultimately they can't do anything. They have to allow Kate to make her own decision. But as that meeting was held, Kate did in fact make a decision, and that was to join her father Jacob and work with the colony to create the army of Batmen. As Cassandra sits down in her room, she speaks of a time several weeks ago when she had a run-in with a group of children traffickers. Just as the leader was preparing to send out the next group of kids, he noticed something in the shadows and he said that it would seem that they aren't alone. Cassandra stepped out of the darkness telling him, no, you're not. The children, you won't. Take them. The leader begins to laugh as electricity is shot out of his tattoos and he calls out to his men to deal with the child. As they rush in, Cassandra easily disarms them, knocking them out one by one, leaving the leader last. He clenches his fist, asking, Do you understand yet? My tattoos are laced with microscopic electrodes. Every strike carries an electric death. The leader swings and as Cassandra dodges, she tells him, Then hit me. After missing and falling on the ground, the leader pulls back one last time to hit before being punched to the ground by Clayface. He asks, Did I smash the right guy? And Cassandra tells him yes, but more Yakuza. Clayface readies himself for a fight, stating, Good! I was afraid I was missing the fun part. In our current time, Leslie Tompkins asks, so that's the last time she remembers being happy? Hunting those men was a good thing? Cassandra says, to be good, need to go. Good things. They stole children. We saved them. It was good. Leslie then asks, do you think that you're a good person? And Cassandra tells her, I don't think. I know I'm not good. I can do things but I'm not good. Leslie begins writing in her notepad and she asks, what about her friend Clayface? Cassandra pauses and looks away stating, he tried, but they still killed him. Maybe one day they'll kill me too. And as those words leave her lips, Bruce watches from the Batcave holding his head in his hands. Later as Leslie gets ready to leave, Bruce asks if she has a moment and Leslie tells him, look, I can hate what you did to the boy all I want but you at least spent time with them, each of the Robins. You helped them work through their demons. However, Cassandra doesn't have the tools to deal with them, and frankly, I'm not sure that I do either. All I can say for now is that if you insist on dragging Cassandra deeper into this world, you're going to hurt her. Later that night at sea, a freight ship is hijacked by a group of men from the Court of the Owls, and just before they can kill the captain, there's an explosion. From the blast, Kate Kane stands there with Batwing and Azrael, telling the men, no one is dying today, but you can hurt the zombie owl ninjas real good. While those three bring down the Court of the Owl men, Tim makes his way into the Batcave to find Bruce still working on the computer. He says that he would have thought he would have already been out of patrol, and Bruce tells him that he already has Batgirl giving the city a sweep. He could be in Midtown in less than four minutes if needed, but there is something much more pressing here at home. It looks like somebody's been using the Bat computer for hours every night for the past few weeks while he was out of the cave. Let's see what they've been building. The projection table buzzes, bringing up an image of a Bat Tower in the middle of Gotham, and Tim tells him, Hold on, give me a minute to explain there. Bruce tells Tim that he suffered a major concussion in the King Clayface attack. He was supposed to be recovering. And Tim yells, Batgirl destroyed everything that we built over the last year just the other day. You had to realize that it would start solving every hole that she punched into the night program. You probably even expected it. Bruce looks at the table telling him that he's not interested in starting up the night's protocol again. He'll continue to provide assistance to the family as needed. Tim shouts, you can't be serious. You can't let a little wrench in the works of the machine blow it all up. Batgirl wasn't right. Bruce takes a deep breath and he says, Batgirl is right, and you know it. 
You've trained for years to see that. Instead, all you're hearing is the voice of desperation. Echoes of Mr. Oz's prison. I shouldn't have let you back into action so soon. I should have gotten you help. Tim yells, this isn't some teenage tantrum. This is the future of everything that we talked about. The entire future of Batman. I don't care what happens to. Bruce spins him around shouting, well, I do care, damn it. This conversation's over. Leslie Tompkins is coming back tomorrow for a session with Cassandra. Afterwards, you should talk to her. Tim hops over the rails to his bike standing. Yeah, well, screw it. I'm starting to remember why I spent so much time away from Gotham. But as Tim speeds off to the Belfry, he punches the wall screaming in frustration and then suddenly a voice calls out. The voice calls, stating that he knows exactly how he feels. He had it right in his grasp. He's the only one smart enough to see the pieces moving. Tim turns back, asking who was there, and the voice gets louder and says, Sorry, I keep forgetting we're not friends. Yet. I've been studying the work that you've done, the work that you're going to do. And Tim asks, How could you possibly know? And Ulysses steps out, stating, I know all about Bat Tim from the future because I've seen it. We met before, but right now this device in my hand, it has the entire history of the future stolen right from the central computer of your future self. So, you want to take a look? Moments later, Tim begins to see himself in the future attending Ivy University, living a peaceful life. But that life is taken away when the news reports that the President of the United States deploys the colony to take Batman in. Tim watches the TV as it shows Kate moving in on Wayne Manor with colony forces and her gunning Bruce down. Back in the current time, Tim watches all of the images of the future and Ulysses says, pretty gruesome, huh? Tim tells him that he doesn't understand what the hell did I just witness. And Ulysses says that you saw the future, your future, how you become an evil deranged Batman. We don't have all the details, but the important beats still hit, don't they? Ulysses turns to leave and Tim asks, why would you show me this? And Ulysses tells him, you already know why. So I can help you, Tim. Tim begins to follow Ulysses into the next room, filled with rare historical weapons. And that's what Tim asks. What is all of this? Ulysses says, Well, I wasn't working for the colony for chump change. Weapons development is a lucrative business. It allowed me to acquire some ingenious weapons, some of the best ones ever designed. And not just the finished projects, but the prototypes. The ones that you can feel the heart put into them. Tim says, Please don't take this the wrong way, but this is a lot to process. I still can't figure out what's in it for you. Ulysses tells him that a few weeks ago he cracked the files and saw the history of the future and wasn't in it. Another version of him went head to head with Batman, but mostly he just fell off the face of the earth. He couldn't let that happen. He had a much higher role in shaping the future. And that's when he learned that role. The role for him was to give Tim Drake the future today. Brother I, activate full systems and say hello to your creator. I'll give you the tools that you used to create a lasting piece of Gotham before you were hit with all that trauma that messed up your future self. What do you say? Tim takes a moment and tells him that he needs to think about it. And Ulysses shouts, really? You're seriously not going to jump on this? Well, I'm not going to pretend I'm not disappointed, but I understand. Don't take too long, okay? There is a reason for all this. Batwoman just officially signed up with the colony along with her friends, Batwing and Azrael. Eternity is marching forward and you need to shape it before it shapes you. A short while later, out on the rooftops, Bruce watches a group of criminals conducting business, and Tim looks over, stating that he's going to take a guess that they're talking about puppies. Bruce tells him that he isn't going to reconsider the bell, for he's not restarting Gotham Knights. And Tim jumps down, telling him that he knows. He just wanted to say that he saw something today that really shook him. He just wanted to be by Batman's side. He knows he's been off lately, so that's why he's here, asking for help. Bruce tells him that he can start by taking out the two smaller guys on the right, while he takes out the one with the semi-automatic. Tim asks, seriously? And Bruce smiles, telling him, I'm glad you came back. Tim laughs, telling him, <laughs> me too. But just before the two of them can jump into action, the two colony men wearing battle suits jump into the bar and immediately open fire on everyone. Meanwhile, back with Ulysses, he watches the video feed of the colony soldier stating that this is all for you, Tim. I just need you to see what I have to offer. Later, in the bat cave, Bruce looks down at the two men wearing the battle suits, and Tim tells him 18 mobsters are dead, yet he still brought them back to the cave. This is really a dangerous idea. And Bruce says that he knows. Tim goes on stating that the aggressive lethal force being used by the colony is their MO, and after this, you want to sit down and talk to them face to face? Last time, Colonel Kane kidnapped you and got a gun to your head just to get you out of the way. Bruce bends down, looking at the men, stating that he needs to be a detective here. They have a mystery at their feet. The fractures that these men suffered, it's as if they were fighting against the suits. They've always known that the colony had battle suits with independent programming. And Tim says, okay, fine, so that's a mystery, but we need to stay here and figure out the answer together. Bruce walks and jumps into the Batmobile, telling him that he wants him to run every diagnostic that he can think of on their suits, keep them unconscious. Tim tells him that he doesn't like it, and Bruce says that he doesn't either. The other half of this mystery isn't in this cave, and he plans to find it. 
While he leaves the Batcave, Ulysses tells Brother I to access the tracker protocol and keep an eye on Batman. He watches as Bruce makes his way to Kane Manor, and Ulysses asks, what's this, the child at home of Nathan, Philip, Jacob, and Martha Kane? Scan for buyer signatures. Brother Eye runs a scan, and on the screen, images of Kate and Jacob appear, and Ulysses takes another bite out of his takeout, stating, ah, this is gonna be a nice family reunion. Bruce walks up around the rundown manor, looking at all of the photos of the Canes, and Kate and Jacob step out of the shadows, stating that they're glad that he can make it. But let's be clear, they had nothing to do with the soldiers. Someone is trying to pit them against one another. Bruce picks up a picture from the frame, asking, Who could it be? And Kate tells him that she isn't taking the bait. They're all here, aren't they? She agrees that the trust needs to be earned, so let her start earning it. Back in the cave, Tim runs the scans on the colony soldiers, not finding anything out of the ordinary, and then out of the shadows, Cassandra jumps down asking, Where are you going? Tim jumps back in panic and then laughs, asking, How did you get in here? I thought he locked every entrance. Cassandra looks over at the soldiers, stating, Bad men. And when she touches the battlesuit's helmets, she says, Batwoman. Tim asks if everything's okay, and Cassandra says, All this. Everything we go, is it good? Tim begins, stating, Well... I think we do our best to be good, but sometimes we make mistakes. And Cassandra stops. Like Clayface. Tim pauses and then says, Well, I've been meaning to ask. Could you maybe use a new scene partner? I know you were working on The Tempest, but Midsummer Night's Dream was... But before he could finish, he realizes something. The transformation. That's what didn't make sense. Tim runs back to the computer, stating, Their bodies weren't networked into the colony suits. They were relying on a different network altogether. He then yells at the computer to run a blood toxicity report, primary focus looking for traces of nanotech. Just then, the entire system lights up red, and Tim says, He's gonna kill them! He's gonna kill all of them! Meanwhile, back with Ulysses, he watches as Tim begins to connect the dots, and he grabs an electric razor, stating, <laughs> It's just so sad. He was supposed to be a supporting role. But we're on the verge of the impossible. We're crashing an entire future down onto the present. Ulysses then tells Brother I to activate full systems. Take full control. And Brother I responds, I comply. Ulysses begins to shave off parts of his hair, stating that it's time to be what the future demands. And on the mini screen in front of him, all of the colony battle suits begin to activate. Back at Kane Manor, Bruce folds his arms, stating that if what they're saying is true, then their system is compromised. And Jacob tells him, yeah, we recognize that, which is why we have Lucas Fox investigating the Colony Airship servers so it doesn't happen again. But while the three of them are talking, the computer screen lights up as it sounds off an alarm. And Kate shouts that they need to get out. They're under attack! Over in the Batcave, Tim frantically comes through the file, stating that this is all Ulysses! He's running one of Brother Eye's systems through his nanovirus, a protocol called One Man Army Corps, OMAC. We need to get those nanobots out of the soldier's bloodstream before it's too late! But as he presses the computer activate button, the screen then lights up, stating access denied. And Ulysses appears on the screen, stating, You had your chance to bring the real, lasting order. Now the OMACs will be the foot soldiers of a new tomorrow. And their first job will be to erase anyone stupid enough to stand in their way. Tim yells that this is insane, and Ulysses tells him, Don't be so small-minded. Anyway, there's still a role in this for you. Cassandra looks back, asking, Tim? And when she looks, she sees Ulysses' nanobots taking over Tim's body. He shouts, Tonight is the beginning of a new, bold era of Batman. And I'm honored for you to be a part of it, Tim. As his vision begins to fade, it begins to return with images of the future of all of his friends. Images of Cassandra dying in a fight looking for answers, Jean-Paul having the mantle of Azriel being taken by force by genetic copies, and the assassination of Luke Fox. Tim yells to stop. He doesn't want to see any of this, but Ulysses tells him that he can't. This is too important. A digital Ulysses then walks out, and Tim shouts that he's done with these games. Ulysses tells him that they aren't done until he says they're done. He probably should have guessed it by now, but there's no way that he can punch his way out of this. But don't worry, your body's about to get one hell of a workout. Back in the Batcave, Cassandra tries hitting Tim to wake him up, and as she kicks Tim one last time, the two soldiers from before grab a hold of her. Tim watches from inside the digital world, shouting to get their hands off of her, and Ulysses laughs, telling him, Oh, come on, get with the program, Timbo, they can't hear you. This is exactly what I was offering you. You want to protect Cassandra? You want to save them all? You can assimilate them into the OMAC project. They can all be a part of our big dream. All I need is for you to give in. What do you say? Over in Kane Manor, the Omax begin to storm the ruins, forcing Bruce and Kate into a corner. As everyone begins to get surrounded, Batwing and Azrael jump through the window, and as soon as Batwing lands, he lets out a sonic screech. The soldiers all around begin to fall to the ground, and he says Azrael and him have been fighting these for a bit. 
the one thing that they've learned is that these are nanobot shells. They can disrupt the communications between the individual parts and that's when they'll lose control. However, that's not the real bad news. This is future tech, a few decades ahead of our time. This is Brother Eye, the same computer system that we faced when Future Tim came into the picture. Bruce looks at him asking, you think Future Tim is behind this? And Batwing tells him, no, we need to accept that there is a much worse possibility though. Bruce stares for a moment and then he tells him, I'm listening. Tim watches the video from Kane Manor and he screams, it's not me! And Ulysses tells him, of course it's not, but all of these are plays from your playbook. Even Batman is beginning to accept that he may have lost you forever. You've been far too unstable in these past few months to not even admit that it's a possibility. But how about we cut to the chase? I wanted us to be equals in this adventure, but it's clear that you're the wrong Tim for this. Thankfully, I don't need you to agree if you don't want to. Tim turns back shouting, get out of my head! And he punches Ulysses. Ulysses laughs as his body crumbles to pieces and reforms, telling him, pathetic, really? Just sit back and let me do all the work. I've never had to save a life before, no lie. I'm pretty excited. He reaches out grabbing Tim by the head and suddenly Tim cries out in pain. Tim tries to pull Ulysses' hands off, but Ulysses presses them together harder and harder, telling him that it's time to be who you are meant to be. Back in the Batcave, Cassandra reaches out for Tim asking, are you in there? Through Brother Eye's voice, Tim hits her with an electrical blast telling her, yes, I finally am. Soon all of the nanobots begin to shine with red lights and they all begin to state, new protocol receiving, processing, run project, Pax Batmana. Tim's nanobots begin to take form of himself as future Batman, including giving him a single brother eye in the middle of his face. Cassandra calls to the computer, calling out to Bruce, but Tim tells her that it won't be necessary. He'll be here soon enough. Cassandra looks back, telling him, no, you're not. And Tim tells her, I know you can read body language. You know this isn't a joke. This is the real me. But there is something I would like you to tell Batman. Something very important. Tell him that I am doing this all for him. So don't get in the way. With that, Tim and the other nanobots shoot up into the sky, breaking out of the Batcave, calling out to the other nanobots. And a few moments later, Bruce runs into the Batcave, calling out to Cassandra, pulling debris off of her, asking if she's all right. Cassandra tells him, Tim, he changed. And Bruce says, I know, but it's okay now. We're gonna get him back. But first, we need to help with the person that you've been sneaking out and keeping track of. A short while later, in the apartment downtown, Bruce and Cassandra look around the messy place and a female voice tells them, Tim would often talk about how you would randomly show up. No matter how angry he would get, he would always put on the costume and run out fighting. But tell me, how bad is it? Bruce looks right at her, telling her, Spoiler, it's time. We need your help. Stephanie sighs, sipping her soda. Fine. Let's get to work. Back with the nanobots, they begin to gather around the old rundown building, joining together to reconstruct the building into a newer, better version of the Belfry. The Belfry 2.0, and Ulysses says, this is it, this is Batman. And Tim tells him, yes, this is exactly where I need to be. Belfry 2.0 is online. Let's get to work. A few moments later, Tim begins his raid on the GCPD to acquire more soldiers for his task force. As the nanobots swarm throughout the building, Tim walks behind them, shooting people, telling them, don't consider these bullets an execution, but as a sign of respect, we will make you a part of the OMAC project and pave the way for a brighter future. Just as Tim points his gun at Detective Montoya, Kate bursts in, kicking Tim to the ground, telling him that he better not lay a finger on her. That's right, Tim, brother I, whatever you're called now, it's me, the big bad woman who nearly destroys your perfect pacifist Gotham all over again. Tim gets back up asking, what is the advantage you think you have by confronting me like this? Ulysses radios in stating, this is totally your call. I know you're gonna try and save the Bat family, but this one, she's something else. Kate turns to run out and Tim tells the nanobots to set their priority to eliminating Batwoman. Kate jumps down from the building, calling out that she's got them on her tail and they are very excited to try and kill her. So please say your part of the plan is going smooth. Bruce tells her that he, Cassandra, and Stephanie are sneaking into the new Belfry now. Stephanie's drones are keeping them invisible to Brother Eye's detection. Stephanie says, yeah, they're not visible to anything using Tim's base coat, which is to say every inch of the damn tower. But he didn't really think that this was going to work, right? It was stupid of her to think that she could ever be a part of the Bat family. Cassandra calls back, I believe you. And Stephanie tells her that's why she likes her way better than Mr. Broods a lot. The three of them continue to climb the tower, but Stephanie stops them stating that there has been a problem. There's too much information static ahead, which means the drones won't be able to cover them. Bruce tells her that we just have to act fast. Everyone drops down into the server room, but as Stephanie looks at everything, she says that this is insane. 
These boxes are processing hundreds of yottobytes of data. This place, it could power the entire internet if it spanned the solar system. Over in the control room, Ulysses' computer sound off with an alarm and he asks, how the hell did they get in? He then radios to Tim telling him, hey, your deadbeat dad just showed up to ruin the party. Back out in the city, Tim catches up to Kate telling her, it is pointless to run. We have seen the future in which you bring, you must be stopped. Kate stops turning back asking, is that so? And then she attempts to fight back. As Tim blocks her attacks, he tells her, this is OMAC nano shells coating my body and they can absorb every hit that you throw and then turn it back into kinetic energy at you. He knocks her to the ground and he holds his hand over her face telling her, I'm gonna show you what happens. I'm going to show you what your legacy brings. Over at the tower, Stephanie begins to work through the computer stating that this is something else. The coding is from the future of alternate timelines. It's leaps and bounds with what she's familiar with. But it's still Tim's work. She can already see all of his quirks line by line. So if she does it right, she might be able to turn off the connection between him and Brother Eye. Just then the server room lights up turning red and Brother Eye tells her, that is unlikely. Bruce tells Cassandra to make sure that she keeps Stephanie safe at all costs. And Brother Eye goes on telling Bruce, you were an inadequate father. You refused to utilize me to the extent that I could have been used. Tim has been given the control that he needed and now we will do the same. Nanobot covered Batwing and Azrael step out and they begin to attack. Stephanie turns back to continue work on the computer, but Brother I tells her that you will never fully realize what this timeline has taken away from you. Stephanie pauses asking, what do you mean? Images begin to form in front of her, showing her as the future Batgirl, along with Cassandra at her side. Back out on the city, Kate's vision begins to change and she soon finds herself in Wayne Manor. She looks around asking, how is she here? And then suddenly colony soldiers begin running up. That's when she sees what Tim wanted her to see, the future of her giving orders to those soldiers to blow up the grandfather clock. As the soldiers get to work, Tim asks, do you see why I needed you to understand? This is what happens if you're allowed to continue down this path. This is why you need to die. Over in the server room, Cassandra takes off her mask asking, it's us, Batgirls? And Brother I tells her, yes, you were accepted to be a part of their world. Cassandra Cain was no orphan, she was family. Stephanie Brown, your journey with the bat only began a spoiler, but you would later become the next Robin. Now do you understand why they do not see you as a threat? Those versions are your better selves. You are not that, you are second rate. You will never measure up. Stephanie begins to cry and then she stops and begins to laugh. Brother I says, I do not understand, are you laughing? And as Stephanie hugs Cassandra, she taps the button on her wrist stating, I'm doing more than that. Just then Brother I begins to say, ever, ever. And Ulysses asks, what the hell did she just do? Stephanie calls out that they wanted to hurt her by showing her what another version of her pulled off. And all you did was prove that I'm amazing no matter what life I live. You also just gave me access to the entire history of a timeline I didn't know existed. <laughs> now I'm gonna use that to beat you to the ground. Out in the city though, Tim brings Kate back to her senses telling her, I needed to bring you to the fold, but instead you could have been the one to end it. Now you know why. Just then Stephanie's voice comes in over the radios telling him, yeah, uh, that's not really what happened. Kate asks, spoiler? And Stephanie tells her, hey, spoiler stuff's in the name. Turns out Brother Eye and Ulysses have been playing with time from the start. Ulysses shouts to Brother Eye, call back the Omax to the Belfry. Kill those idiots before they ruin everything. Stephanie turns back telling Cassandra, uh, I'm gonna need a few minutes. And Cassandra tells her, don't stop. I won't let them get you. She runs back to fight with Bruce and Bruce tells her, I'm so sorry. I didn't want to bring you into this. I didn't want you to get hurt. And Cassandra says, just saw another world. I'm not doomed to be bad. I am a bat. This is where I should be. Stephanie jacks back into the network telling Tim and Kate that she's only got a few minutes, but after seeing what really happened, she could see what drove Tim insane. Kate did shoot Bruce, but Brother Eye only showed them what he wanted them to see. Tim's projection then changes to the time moments before Bruce's death with Kate telling him that it's bad out there. The government isn't going to ignore what he's doing anymore. Not after what happened with the league. But he can play cat and mouse around the world all he wants. Nobody's going to call her out for letting Batman slip through her fingers time and time again. Bruce looks at her and says that they don't have time for that. He's dying. The radioactive isotope that he was exposed to constructing the Brother Eye satellite. 
I'm paying the price. That's why I couldn't stand back anymore. That's why I wanted to set as much right before I put this whole dream to bed. Starting with Brother I. After he finishes his final protocol, he'll self-destruct, eliminating the files on the Bat computer and disable every vehicle and weapon that we have ever made as the Bat family. Kate asks, what are you saying? And Bruce tells her, Batman doesn't have to be eternal. Batman was an idea that I needed to live. All the people who have followed me on this dark path, they were all so good, so damn good. But Batman, Batman was an idea that holds them back. Hell, look at him. He's at Ivy University building his future. That's all I wanted for him. That's all I wanted for all of my children. Bruce then grabs Kate's gun, holding it to his chest in this future, telling her, I've already recorded a final message to the family on Brother Eye. That way they will all know that I saw this moment coming, that I chose for this. You will pass President Waller's psychic probing. She will see that you did kill me, please. Plus, I'd be spared a few more minutes of extraordinary pain. Kate begins to cry, stating, I've always been honored to have been called family. Goodbye, Bruce. And that's when the gun went off. Tim begins to scream, no! And Stephanie says that the real Tim is starting to push back against the programming. Tim falls to his knees, stating that future Tim, he didn't know that this is what happened, did he? That's why he became evil. He thought she killed him. And Stephanie tells him, no. Brother I deleted the message that Bruce sent out. He wanted the war on crime that Batman promised him. And Ulysses shouts, And brother, I was right to want it. He just wanted to push Tim a little. Stephanie then asks, By what? Tearing the Bat family apart? Rebuilding it? Everyone in the world is dead. And Tim was the one who killed most of them. That's why I'm giving Tim a free choice. He can choose to continue on this path and build the Gotham that his future self built, or he can choose this future and shut down brother I. And Tim asks, why should she even trust him with that? And Stephanie tells him, because it doesn't matter if he's Robin, Red Robin, or Batman. It doesn't matter if she's spoiler, Robin, or Batgirl. She knows Tim Drake, and she believes in what he stands for. She knows that he'll make the right call. A few seconds go by, and the belfry begins to rumble, and Brother Eye calls out, Error, error, signal disturbance. Ulysses begins to shout, no, don't listen to her. We're so damn close. You can't let some idiot girl make you into some irrelevant nobody. Stephanie runs up, punching Ulysses, yelling, yeah, well, I just did. Outside, Kate asks Tim if it's really him, and he tells her, yeah, he's trying to keep the tower together to make sure everyone can get out. But even after trying to not become what his future self was, his dream was still weaponized into something that could kill everyone and everything that he ever loved. Case as well. Her good news of the day is that she stays with the colony and still ends up killing Batman. And she doesn't want that in her life. Tim begins to rip away from his connection at Brother Eye. And as he lets go, he says that it was his dream. It turns so ugly. She hugs him and he asks, what comes next? Where do we go from here? Where can we go? Kate tells him that she doesn't know. She really doesn't know. But they'll figure it out like everyone else does. One day at a time. Soon the Belfry Tower fades into nothingness and three weeks go by. Bruce and Kate sit down for dinner, and Kate asks, It's never going to feel normal, is it? Bruce says that he heard that Jacob has been cleared out of his court-martial and reinstituted as colonel. Kate laughs, stating, You heard, huh? Bruce says, The president assured him the colony doesn't exist anymore. This is the cost of reinstatement. Kate then says that if it does get recreated, she had nothing to do with it. After everything that happened, it's time for her to stop listening to what others want her to do. Luke agreed that he's putting on the Batwing costume for a bit to focus on the Brother Eye tech to make sure that nothing like this happens again. Azrael needs more, and he spoke about seeing things from a greater perspective, and she heard that he had a long conversation with Cyborg. Bruce grabs his glass, stating, Do you plan on wearing the bat while you figure yourself out? And Kate asks, Are you going to try and stop me? Bruce tells her that she's the closest family that he has in the world right now. They may not see eye to eye, and that may frustrate him but he wants to be a part of her life as much as he wants her to be a part of his. Later, as Kate walks out of the restaurant, Jacob calls and asks how it went. Kate asks, you didn't listen in? And Jacob tells her, well, it's hard with just a laptop now. However, I got a ping on an old tip, something about a new coven of the religion of crime. Kate suits up telling him, good. Sounds like a job for Batwoman. Meanwhile, over at Leslie Tompkins' clinic, Leslie tells Cassandra that she's so happy that she'll be joining them. But Bruce wanted to be clear that she doesn't have to stay. Cassandra tells her, I want to be a better person, good at person things. Leslie laughs, opening the door to her room, telling her, well, I think we can help you with that. I also called on the help of an old friend to help tutor you until we can seriously sit down and talk about enrolling you into high school. The door opens up and Barbara finishes setting up her books, stating that she's so excited to be working with her. Cassandra shouts, Batgirl? And Barbara tells her, in here, Barbara's fine, or Babs. I understand you already have a good understanding of the written word, but trouble vocalizing. 
figured we can start there and maybe work up to Shakespeare. Cassandra begins to quote Shakespeare's Tempest, and Barbara says, wow, maybe we can skip ahead a few lessons. You really are amazing. Outside of her door, Clayface cries. And he says, yeah, she really is. And he leaves a note in the door. As Clayface heads outside, he sits in the car. And Dr. Veronica asks, does she see you? Clayface tells her, no, she's doing fine without me. I'm ready now. Let's get the hell out of this city before I change my mind. It's time to become something new. Elsewhere, Tim gets into a car and Stephanie asks, are you sure you want to do this? And Tim says, after all the things that she saw, he has so many things to ask. And now they have all the time in the world to figure out the answers. Stephanie pauses and tells him, they? Us? And Tim says that he's seen the lonely path and what it does to him. He's going to need someone to keep him honest. If she wants to come with him, let's see where the road takes them. Stephanie stops and telling him, yeah, I'd like that. Back over in Gotham, Alfred radios in, stating that young Master Timothy's car has left Gotham heading south, the opposite direction of Ivy University. Bruce tells him to shut down the trace in the car. He'll reach out if he needs me. I trust him on that. Alfred then says that the whole project left a lasting impact, didn't it? Perhaps next you'll say that you're starting a school of young vigilantes. Bruce tells him, no, not yet. And Alfred shouts, yet? You can't be serious. Just then the bat signal shines and Bruce tells Alfred, we're gonna shelf this conversation for now. Send a message to Jim, tell him, Everything's going to be all right. And there you have it. We have come to the conclusion of Batman Detective Comics here on DC Rebirth. Uh, honestly, this was one of my favorite DC Rebirth storylines, and I can't wait to see what they're going to do with Tim Drake, Spoiler, and Batwoman in the future. They've been taken out of comic books for a little while, so they can kind of get a cooling off period, but that doesn't mean we're never going to see them again. So what do you think? Do you like how this ended? Do you want more Tim Drake now? Do you want more Batwoman now? Because she started getting her own comic book following this storyline. So if you want more Batwoman, let me know, because I'm going to cover her anyway because of the crossover happening in Arrowverse and but if you want more than that let me know anyway guys uh overall I really enjoyed James Tinian's run I really liked what he did with Cassandra Kane. I really like what he did with spoiler and Tim Drake he got beat he got sent through the ringer that woman I thought got a good good redeeming factors and the whole clay face thing was one of my favorite things in DC Rebirth period hands down so I want to know your guys' opinion in general. And with that, we're going to close out this video. Don't forget, you can find me over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash eligiblemonster, where we play all kinds of video games from Warframe to Elder Scrolls Online to Spider-Man, the PS4 title. And we do like daily podcasting over there about comic books, video games, and even conspiracy theories. Hope to see you guys there, and I'll see you next time right here at Comic Storian.